right? Yes. <laughs> Rather than having to pay somebody back and having that weigh not just on you personally, emotionally, but the business as well. And so there's a few different types of online businesses, you know, e-commerce, yeah. membership, SaaS, content. When you first can't discover, oh, I want to buy an online business, what type of online business, like what model, business model did you believe would be best for you? Or were you thinking about buying and why? Yeah, that's a good point. And that's where I really relied on, you know, many of your lessons. I mean, when you, when you search online businesses, your, your, your YouTube videos come up immediately and you've laid it out quite well, the risks and rewards of different types of online businesses. And what appealed to me about content or, you know, content businesses are the fact that the overhead's low. You don't have to worry about physical items and, you know, supply chain issues. We all, we've all heard about supply chain issues over the COVID crisis. I didn't want to mm. have to deal with that. Um, online uh, content, online businesses felt like it, it would afford me the most freedom. Um, I could scale it as much or as little as I wanted. I could invest in as much or as little as I wanted. I, and I re really wouldn't have to rely on others like supply chains or, or whatnot. So that's what really appealed to me. Yeah, cool. And so you chose a content business. That's, I think that's, as, as most people know, I think that's the best place to start yeah. for somebody who's a beginner. But I also think it's the best place for people to end as well. If you want to buy a business that's quite passive, unless with a caveat, you have some sort of specific knowledge that you can use as leverage in a, in a different business model right. that you actually want to leverage. I know people that people that work with us, Robin, you know, we do some coaching in our mastermind that have specific knowledge in digital marketing and e-commerce, and they are going to use that as leverage to build their portfolio, but they want to decide to afterwards exit out of those sorts of deals so they can have a more passive portfolio of different types of online businesses and those models that suit their lifestyle goals and their financial goals over uh, the e-commerce routes or a different business model, right. because that can be hard to choose. It can be hard to get the lifestyle goals time-wise and also the financial goals with profit margin wise with those types of businesses, not to say there's anything against it, but it's, it's a different kettle of fish. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that you don't have all of that to learn and fumble around with, which I guess we'll probably chat about towards the end around what it's like taking over the business and, and what you've had to do and learn and stuff like that. Cause that's going to be very insightful for people, but you you just bought your business a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations. But Thanks. what the, what was the journey like? Tell me, tell me about some of the hardest things that you came up against. Some of the things that you, that might've been very profound for you that you learned that was critical, but yeah. let's probably start with, you know, the harder parts of the journey. So people can know what they have coming down the pipe when they decide to go this route as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm as new to online businesses and even, you know, digital the digital economy as anyone can be. So if I can do it, I think anyone can do it. I didn't have a Facebook account until I <laughs> did the online business teaching and I realized, oh, I probably need to have a Facebook account in order to get on the community. So that's that's how new I am. Yeah, um, well. Yeah, I mean, you know, with with my background in real estate, I I needed uh, something. I needed a methodology to uh, to create to evaluate to justify the value of an online business. Mm. And so as I as I read about you know evaluating these online businesses, I realized it's really similar to real estate. I mean, you can get a profit and loss statement, and they can be longer or shorter or as granular as uh, you want them to be. And then you as a buyer make the decision, does, does this, do the numbers work out? And, but ultimately a deal is made between two people or two or individual, you know, people. And so the, the deal is, I think you feel most comfortable with the deal based on the seller. Um, and that's, that's what I felt comfortable with in this case. I did a lot of learning. Um, I mean, you're, we'll, we'll probably talk about the due diligence methodology that you've um, laid out your, your templates and your, all, all the different resources that we rely on. And if that didn't exist, then I don't think I'd move forward with buying an online business. I mean, I'm the type of person who needs evidence and 
the due di diligence framework gave me a way to get reproducible evidence. Yeah, awesome. So so grateful that that tool has been so helpful for you yeah. and so many others. It's many years in iteration and many yeah. failures on my part. So yeah, it's it's good to be able to save some people some time and, and some money with that. Coming back to what you said before about the seller and a lot of buying the business sort of relies on the relationship and the connection you have with the seller. I think that's so valuable that you sort of, you brought that up because a lot of people may get over complicated and overrun with the data yeah. part of it, which is important. The data part and getting the data, putting it in the framework um, and analyzing it and getting our review is very, very important and understanding the data and looking at it from the looking at it from the right lens. Mm -hmm. By the way, guys, if you don't have our framework, make sure you get it. There'll be a link in the in the show notes. You can get it for free. The data is important, but the part about the seller and the connection and the communication, the relationship you have with the seller, tell me tell me what you mean about that because I think that's I think that's fascinating for people to learn more, especially with your background in due diligence in real estate and connecting with the seller of other assets as well. And what, what you learned from that, you brought over into online businesses. Be cool to hear. Yeah, absolutely. You can get a sense of the seller or the person that you're doing business with very early by how readily available they are to answer difficult questions. And, you know, I compiled a bunch of questions based on all of the uh, due diligence teachings and all the uh, lessons in your course. And so I had, I had about two or three pages of questions and real, you know, questions that are, you could tell if someone's BSing you, right? Based on the way they ask questions, where they punt a question or they don't have the data. And sometimes they're like how quickly they answer the questions. And this particular seller had the questions answered within 24 hours or less. The, the individual was, in in asia living in asia so i mean even with that time difference we were able to get these things done so i felt comfortable there from the start ultimately you know the we we uh conversed over zoom um and that was also very reassuring um it was an individual who wasn't in the business of flipping making making quick sales it was a passion project for him. You could tell based on the content, the, the nature of the content, it was honest um, content. It didn't, wasn't spammy. It wasn't um, overly templated. He wasn't trying to sell anything. It was mostly display uh, like, like ads. It wasn't affiliate marketing or anything like that. He was an, he was an individual who left, left the, uh, lived the lifestyle. Um, and so that was all very reassuring. So it was a very, really sincere seller. And it showed up in, in his website. I like that. Now, 